Aside from building and operating your own web server, there is a wide variety of hosting options available in today's market. Let's look at a few of the most popular ones. If having full control of your environment and your systems is the goal, then self-hosting is still probably the best option in which you provide the server, you provide the environment, the, the physical location, the power and the network connections, you provide the internet connection, and of course, the downside of this solution is that you provide 100% of the risk um, if you have to have 24-7 support and make sure your web server is up all the time. This isn't always the best option and you may be limited by the choice of internet connections you have available and the price to build a reliable internet connection that can run a server 24 seven. One of the earliest ways to purchase a space for a website still exists in shared hosting. With shared hosting, you lease a virtual host on a shared server. The provider handles all of the server maintenance and operating system tasks, and you simply have a user account and can upload files and run a server on that host. This type of hosting tends to have performance and reliability problems that make this sort of hosting a challenge. An improper configuration can actually lead to breaches because other websites may be able to hack into yours if they can traverse the file system and have any way of figuring out in what directory your files are located. Some of these vendors have been around for a very long time and they're very good, but others can be incompetent or unscrupulous. Some of these hosts are havens for spammers and phishing attacks, and the site owners really don't care and would actually rather get their money from them. And so getting hacked and having your site compromised can be very, very common on this. At the end, when I go through some available providers, I'll list the ones that I know to be fairly reliable and don't have this problem. But that's a scary proposition when you get into shared hosting is that this sort of thing can occur. Managed platforms are very popular. This is where you would get a pre-configured open source proprietary platform. Most hosting providers these days provide hosted WordPress. And of course, you can get that from WordPress.com as well. There are also services like Squarespace, Weebly, and Wix that provide decent hosting opportunities without having to actually build a website at all. Users can simply choose from available configuration choices and set up their web servers in a wide variety of ways. Again, some of these are great, but you do have limited choices that you wouldn't face if you built your entire website from scratch. Some of these managed platforms have free versions, but those usually contain ads that pay for your, your site and you don't control the quantity or quality or content of those ads. Moving up the line, you get to virtual private servers, which is the platform that we emulated for the Linux hosts in this class. When you sign up for a virtual private server, you select the operating system build, or you can even select some pre-installed applications. Again, WordPress would be a common choice of a system that's already pre-installed with WordPress, but you run your own server that is set up to that level. Most of these systems are Linux based, but there are some Windows virtual private server hosting options available too. You either manage the server in all of its operating system updates and in operating system configuration like we've done in this class or most providers offer server management for an additional fee. This makes for a highly flexible solution because most VPS platforms are very scalable and very adjustable. Simple systems start around $5 a month but can be grown to tremendous size by adding processors, RAM, and disk space and Systems are usually set up and available to build clusters of servers and multiple servers with failover and things of that nature. So this is a very good and very popular option these days for web hosting. I pay $10 a month for my web hosting and my virtual private server, and I am very, very happy with the results. Moving beyond a single virtual private server, we get into cloud hosting. And cloud hosting comes in a variety of choices. You can choose virtual servers, but you can also choose bulk storage, 
which means that you could have a virtual private server somewhere and then do backups to cloud-hosted bulk storage from another provider. This is a good way to make sure that you have good off-site backups of anything you've put on another system. Cloud hosting often charges by CPU usage, storage, and bandwidth usage combined. Amazon Web Services is a good example of this. AWS storage is really, really cheap, but their CPU and bandwidth can be much more expensive. If you're looking for Windows cloud hosting, the best option is probably Azure hosting from Microsoft. Since Microsoft sets everything up for you, you can generally count on them being the best. However, there are other providers like Rackspace that also provide excellent Windows services and excellent support to go with them. So Microsoft Azure is not your only option here. Most of the providers that do cloud hosting offer free trials and demos to make sure that their product is what you're really looking for before you commit to buy. Since I first recorded this video, container hosting has also become a very popular solution. Unlike hosting an entire server, containers only contain the part of the operating system required to run your application. This makes them both smaller, more versatile, and more secure because there aren't pieces of the operating system that can get corrupted or attacked because the only processes running are those needed to support the application. Docker is one of the most common forms of containerization right now, although there are tools like CoreOS that compete. Containers are also highly scalable because you can spin up multiple containers to run the same application as demand increases or decreases. Larger applications need orchestration tools to keep the entire set of containers running smoothly. Systems like Kubernetes, Rancher, and OpenStack provide this support. Container hosting is offered by most of the cloud service providers shown in the previous slide. I'm not going to go into deeper detail than this because containerization is beyond the scope of this class. And finally, rounding out the most popular choices is co-location. With co-location, you either provide or lease a physical server and the co-location host provides the internet connection, power, usually generator backed, climate control, physical security, and everything else you need to host your servers in their location. This is a really good option if you want 100% control and ownership of your server, but don't want to have to set up the physical location. You can purchase co-location and distance as far away in large data centers, or there are smaller co-location providers in most big cities around the country, so your server could be local enough that you could drive to it when you want to do maintenance. And in fact, a lot of these places are set up so that you can actually get physical access during the day to your servers. You can go on site to manage and maintain and perform updates and hardware repairs. And then your server is safely locked down overnight and while it's a normal operation. Just to give you an overview of some of the different plans and pricings and services available, let's take a quick look at some of the providers that I am familiar with or have worked with in the past. A small orange is a great little host if you need just a small shared plan. They start off at $8 a month and they also offer WordPress hosting and they do get up into different cloud VPS packages as well. One in one is also a fairly popular starter package uh, because they offer some pretty cheap packages for web hosting and they do also offer server packages and BPS. DreamHost has also been a lot around for a very, very long time. And while their hosting is a little bit more expensive, they do offer some pretty good services and quality to back that up. When you get into managed systems, Squarespace is one of the leaders in this area. You can build websites or online stores starting at a relatively low price. Weebly is very popular for people who want free websites, but you can get rid of the ads and have some website hosting starting at a fairly low cost. Wix is similar. I don't think they even show pricing. In fact, I wasn't able to find it very easily. You start off with a free website and then they upsell you for more. And of course, WordPress.com is a really good way 
to host if you want a WordPress website because they are the makers of WordPress. Getting into cloud hosting, Linode is one of the really good providers that starts at $5 a month. I have several accounts with them for different purposes. My own personal account is the two gigabyte, $10 a month package you see here. I also work with people who have either the 10 or the $20 packages to host multiple websites with no problem. And they're really good to work with. And also whether you are a customer of theirs or not, under the resources section, you'll find some really good tutorials on how to do just about everything in Linux. Some of the best competition for Linode would be DigitalOcean, who also start off at $5 a month, and their packages are very similar to what you'll find at Linode. I should mention, too, that both of these services, all of their VPSs run on SSD drives, so they're very fast and, and very reliable. Moving up the chain a bit are full service providers like Rackspace. When I first started becoming aware of Rackspace, they were mostly a co-location or virtual private server provider. Now they offer full-fledged solutions, including consulting work and everything like that. Lots of services, including managed hosting, managed cloud and co-location and a wide variety of platforms. They're more of an enterprise type thing at this point. I don't think you would want to contact them if you just need someone to host a simple website. Amazon Web Services starts out by offering quite a bit for free, and you can look through their free page and see all that they have to offer. Amazon Web Services is a complexity in and of itself. We could probably teach a whole class just on using AWS. As you see here, their list of products that they have available is just huge. And I can tell you that I don't know what most of this stuff does. And rounding out the list, Microsoft Azure, which again offers quite a bit of variety. You can get full Windows and Linux virtual machines. You can have pre-set up SQL Server databases, uh, other types of databases. Uh, they offer storage and application services, and those tend to be cheaper than going with the full virtual machine. Most of Azure's pricing is based on per hour, and you have to do your own calculations to transfer to how much that's going to cost a month or a year. As you see here, they start off with very, very low, usually fractions of a penny per hour. But if you go to build a full, complete server, you could end up spending thousands of dollars a year. Let's look at some quick calculations for a Microsoft Azure server just to see what they would cost. Your very basic pay-as-you-go plan with one core processor, three and a half gigs of RAM, and 50 gigs of temporary storage comes out to about $102.20 a month if it's turned on all the time. However, if you're going to do any serious application work, your hardware needs to step up pretty much right off the bat. And you're probably going to be looking at something along the lines of at least two cores and 100 gigs of temporary storage with this 8 gigs of RAM or 7 gigs of RAM. And our price just doubled to 20440 Now if you start adding disks to that, let's say that we need... Let's say that we need... 128 gigs of storage and so that's going to be another 589 a month and now our price has gone up to 210 dollars do you want support do you want some of these other products price will just keep going up and up it's still an affordable thing depending on what you're doing but microsoft azure for full servers is definitely not something that's cheap of course, cheaper isn't always better. People try to cut costs and get web hosting as cheaply as they can. But let's face it, if you can't afford 10 or even $20 a month on a web host, and your website isn't bringing you at least $20 a month in business, it's time to really ask the question, why do you even have a website and what do you want it to accomplish? As I said at the beginning of the semester, the first thing you need to do when considering building a website and considering selecting a server is decide what your website should be 
and what you want to accomplish. Asking these questions about price is equally important. $20 a month may seem like a lot of money, but a server that doesn't return at least $20 a month on your investment probably isn't worth building anyway, and maybe you'd be better off just setting up a Facebook page or focusing on social media presence. But that's about it for hosting options. Again, there are many varieties and versions and choices out there. This only covered the main few.